Vox threw himself against his chair. What was this feeling? Humiliation, powerlessness, and the pain from his connection being severed from the TV screens. Ugh. It took him longer than he would be willing to admit to anyone. Not even himself to remember something of utmost importance. His blackened heart jumped as the visage on his TV turned desperate. He jumped up, rushing past his staff, and Valentino, who was still snickering over that stupid song. With the electricity in the circle being interrupted, there was one particular demon he needed to make sure was still alive, or else this could be it for a while, and that he could not allow. Vox stepped into his headquarters stairwell, jumping on the hand railing and sliding down with precision, speed and style. Meanwhile, from somewhere deep beneath the bowels of the building, you screamed in a ceaseless agony when the screens around you had began to flicker, your claws digging into the marble floor as you vomited up static. Something was wrong. Something was invading the broadcast. It was long, sickeningly visceral, and all-consuming. You tried fighting it, but the pain that shot through your body prevented you from even standing. There was no mounting of defenses, there was no resistance, only endurance. As your body arced, you slammed your head repeatedly onto the ground, hoping to balance out the pain, but all you managed to do was black out for around four seconds, until the intrusive pain woke you up once again. It was like a demon of unimaginable darkness was embracing your internal skeleton, trying to break every bone in your body simply by existing. Finally, someone kicked open the door in your room. Viscera! Viscera! Are you still here? Someone finally grabbed you by your shoulders, but the pain was too great. All you saw was white as you convulsed. The hands let go of you, and then, seconds later, the pain was gone, from one second to the other. And the room was drowned in darkness. Your name was Viscera, the fourth member of the V's, and one of Vox's more beloved minions. Your eyes darted towards the person who had entered. None other than Vox himself. You could tell by the light of his face. He had pulled the plug of the TV you were connected to. Your room looked like a one-to-one -one replica of his control room. This was necessary, so that you could always be with him to feed him power. Sighing, he put the plug on the ground, turning to face you. What did you do? He stepped next to you, pulling you out of your own vomit, holding you like an adult-sized baby as you shivered in his arms. Mind explaining to me what happened? He growled. An electric sound coming from his screen. You really didn't want to say anything. And he honestly knew what happened. But his pride wouldn't allow it. But regardless, you almost just died and that was not good. After all, you were vital for everything he did. You were a static demon, a new species of demon that had only started appearing at around the 2000s with the internet. Vox, always needing to be on top, therefore took the opportunity and hired the strongest static demon he could find, which just so happened to be you. Your primary job, and that of the other static demons working under you, 
were used to enhance the hypnotic abilities of Vox's propaganda broadcasts. Wright witty jokes was comedy skits, and most importantly, the reason you specifically had been plugged into the TV was to suppress the influence of any other technology-based demon. Problem was, up until now, you never had dealt with something as vile and as powerful as Alistair. It seemed as if his control over radio waves was stronger than yours, and there was no way you could ever overpower him. It's okay, Viscera, I am here now, grunted Vox annoyed. How dare Alistair try and take this innocent girl away from him. You were his, and his alone. And hell, you had taken on the passing resemblance of a humanoid cat. You had a white, shiny body with a blue cat nose and turquoise shoulder-long hair. Big eyes with long eyelashes that looked like TV static. And you were dressed in a big, puffy winter jacket that went down to your knees, its hood pulled as far as down as possible. Your legs were covered by a black leggings, and you wore black shoes with red LED lights. Two white cat ears came out of the top of your head, creating two little bums under the hood. And you had golden whiskers. You were entirely armless, instead two disembodied hands floated around you. They were attached to the arms of your jacket with a pair of gloves and two safety pins. They functioned like normal hands, just that you could reach much further and could fit them into super tight corners as well, thanks to them not being attached to you with arms. You had a tail that resembled a long electrical plug, which you could insert into various electronic appliances to enhance their function. But there was one extra ability, and it was the reason Vox was so ever fond of you. And the only reason he bothered giving a shit about you outside of general use of the TV broadcast. The power soon returned to the building, but he could feel from your clinging to him that you were still too weak to be reconnected to the system. And so Vox sighed, giving up. For now. You wanna have a drink? He asked. I... I suppose... Yes. He put you down on the ground so you could follow him. Any injuries? He muttered as he stepped forward. Don't act like you care, Vox. Don't act like you care, Vox. He stopped for a moment and you almost passed him. I care enough to ask, Viscera. You looked away, placing your hands on your hips for comfort. Thanks for caring, I suppose. He rolled his eyes and kept going. Vox opened the door to his penthouse. The other two Vs were there, both smugly grinning their egos unnecessarily inflated after Alistair said Vox would be nothing without them. The fuck are you two doing here? barked Vox. They looked at each other, not saying a word, but the looks were enough for the TV demon's screen to flicker angrily. Foxy, baby, it's all right. We turned everything back on. Signal was dead for less than ten minutes mused Valentino. Meanwhile, Velvet jumped up and pulled you aside. The fuck are you wearing? You blushed, looking away. I gave you that bomb ass dress and you aren't wearing it. It... It's not really my style. Well, that nerdy 80s hacker look of yours is totally out of fashion. From somewhere she grabbed a new dress. Go wear this. No. Come on. I don't want to be forced to look at that fashion disaster any longer. Fine. Quietly, you marched into a nearby bathroom. But the three others sat down. 
You could hear them arguing loudly through the closed door as you pulled down the zipper of your jacket. Meanwhile, you wondered how the radio demon had invaded your body. This never happened before. At least not unconsensually. You felt gross. Violated, even. Like you had been in the mouth of a large beast, chewed on before spit out. And you could still feel the deathly embrace of his tentacles beneath your skin. You had seen Valentino's tentacle flicks before, and after this experience, you'd never want to watch them again. Even if the guys and girls wiggling as they were used by the tentacle demons seemed to enjoy it, you did not. You threw on the dress. It was frilly in a black and white square pattern. Even had a little toe on the hip for your tail to be pushed through. And also didn't have any holes for the arms. It was quite literally made for you. And you blushed. God, it was so ugly. Way too tight. Way too revealing. Made you feel like we were one of Valentino's little demon toys. The fabric was super light and fragile. And you shivered a little in it. Due to how much skin it exposed around your collar and legs, you were feeling cold. You kept your gloves on. There was just something about seeing your hands float that made you uncomfortable. And wearing gloves kept the uncanny feeling a little at bay. By now, the loud voices of the other Vs had stopped. And as you entered the penthouse, it was only Vox left sitting there. Seemed like this was only a short shouting match between them. The TV demon sat with his legs spread on a big white sofa leaning back, smoking a cigar. On a small table in front of him was a glass with some whiskey in it. His eyes fell upon you. Ursura. He pointed at you. It looks good. Blushing, you looked away. With his free hand, he tapped next to himself. Come sit with me. Obedient, you followed his order. Despite being a V, you felt more like a subordinate than anyone else. But that was because you were more a background actor rather than actively participating in anything, really. All you did was make Vox feel powerful. Maybe that's why Velvet was so mean to you. You felt like you weren't putting in enough work. Especially since this entire problem was because you weren't strong enough to push Alistair out of the system. You sat down with a depressed expression. So, are you going to hurt me? Casually, he placed an arm around your shoulder, taking a deep drag of the cigar. You could tell from his facial expression that he still hasn't made his choice on that yet. He puffed the smoke into the opposite direction of your face. I don't know yet. On one hand, you disappointed me by not preventing the overload. On the other, images of your convulsing form were portrayed on a screen, both to torment you as well as making him feel a little sad. You tried, obviously. Hmm. As repayment, Val wants you to star in one of his flicks. What? He smirked, the screen of his face turning into a POV recording about a part of the conversation the three had. Hmm. What about Viscera, the little snack of yours, Vox? Snickered Val, who was sitting with his legs crossed, taking drags of his cigarette. Of course we demote her or something. She can't be trusted, grunted Velvet. <laughs> I was thinking more we make her perform in one or two of my flicks. 
Basement dwellers love short haired emo cat girls like her, and that would certainly pay for any damages that we still have to pay. Besides, it would be appropriate punishment. Velvet scoffed. Vox's voice now spoke up. Who knows, without her, more than likely my broadcast would have given up sooner. Yeah, Voxy baby, but then you would also have been less humiliated if that TV of yours turned off a little sooner. Vox growled while you got smaller and smaller in your little corner. It, it's not my fault, you cried. Vox's hand suddenly clasped your chin, making you shiver. If she sucks so much, get someone better then. No, Velvet, please. You whispered as if you were arguing with the recording. Bitch won't even advertise for us wearing my fucking dresses. I put so much fucking work into them, little bitch. I, I, I promise I only wear them now. Please. Thanks. <laughs> Tears were streaming out of your eyes as Vox stopped the recording on a frame where Velvet showed her middle finger, before switching back to his regular face. He had a hungry expression. So, Viscera, what do you think? Please don't kick me out. Please don't kick me out. You cried as you grabbed onto his jacket, which made his grin widen even more. Please, I'll do anything. Anything? You sniffled, looking up at his face, on which a malicious smile had appeared. Anything? Hmm. Tell me, Viscera, he said, placing a finger on your chin. What did he do to you? Why did you scream in pain so much? Your lips quivered. I want to know why you humiliated me so much today. So go ahead. The stage is yours. His hand moved lower, gently wrapping around your throat. You breathed heavily, but he didn't squeeze. Vox just made you feel his presence on your windpipe. I... I could feel him. You sobbed. He was inside me. His tendrils wrapped around each and every bone of my body. It, it was too much, too painful. I, I lost control and I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Next time I let him break my bones, I promise. Licking his lips, Vox seemed to be satisfied with the answer and... Without saying a word, he then pointed at a pluck somewhere on the lower edge of his head. You gulped loudly. Directly interfacing always made Vox so violent, but the man was addicted to it. He loved it when you were snooping around his brain. It was the real reason he wanted you to stick around, and the reason you were a V. Uncomfortably, you reached for your tail, while he unbuttoned his shirt, licking his lips. With a shaking hand, you gave him the plug, but he slapped your hand away. He wanted you to put it in. He wanted you to be responsible for whatever happened next. But you didn't really have a choice here, did you? He leaned back, forcing to climb between his legs. One hand next to his thigh, you leaned forward, only for him to slightly tilt his head, making you jolt back. Uh uh uh, be gentle, Viscera. Got it? Y yes, Vox. Your plug clicked into his face, immediately causing his body to jolt and aggressively grab you by the shoulders. His TV face flickered as his grip became stronger, 
more painful. You, meanwhile, went blind as you saw your own body through his eyes. Your body going limp. Your hands falling to the floor with a quiet thud. Being forced to watch through his eyes as he violated you. With an insane laugh, Vox threw his head back. <laughs> I love it when you're in my head, Viscera! He screamed at the top of his lungs. You could hear him through your ears and in your head, his thoughts of violence and lust fusing uncomfortably with yours. It was like having your brain taken out of your skull and then thrown into a mixer, leaving you to pick up the pieces. Helplessly you watched as he pushed you down on the glass table, throwing the glasses off to the floor, his tongue manifesting out of his 2D screen face. He licked over your shoulder, throat and neck, while using his slender claws to open up Velvet's dress, his claws only barely damaging the tender fabric. He wanted you to wear this again. It looked good on you. And unpacking you out of it was like the opening cherry to the delicious sandy that was your frail little body. His hand slammed on your chest once your dress was pulled down to around your hips. You tried closing your eyes, but as long as he didn't as well, you'd be forced to see this. You little slut, you love this, don't you? He grunted into one of your ears. I can feel the pleasure you're feeling from this, Viscera. Don't act all shy. He slammed his mouth on yours. You could feel the electricity coming off of his screen. It sizzled above your nose, while his tongue mercilessly plunged into your throat. You gacked and wretched at his unfriendly intrusion. After a desperate minute of you trying to keep your stomach contents inside your gut, he retreated his long appendage. Rolling back, his eyes as he embraced the feeling of power he had. Sitting back down on the sofa, he reached for one of your hands, using it to open up his belt. You were lying next to him in bed, shivering. It was the next day. He had just stopped around ten minutes ago, too exhausted to keep going. He allowed you to unplug from him. Unblinking, you stared at the clock of his nightstand. 12 p.m. You must have really disappointed him. To go so all out on you like this. You look down at your body, covered in bite marks and bruises, and probably one or two broken ribs. He had never been so violent to you before. Crying, you apologized. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. He rolled around, sighed. Oh, I know it won't happen again. He purred. You shivered as he placed his hands on your shoulders, gently massaging them. After all, I trust you. Trust me. Even after what I did. Of course, Viscera. After all, you're a V. One of my best. I'm one of your best, he repeated. Exactly. Without you, the show would only be half as fun. Now, his mouth was hovering right over your ear, gently licking your lobe before he said, Get some rest, okay? You'll need it. Thank you for watching my video until the very end.
But before we end the video completely, I would like to shout out all of my wonderful channel members. Zachary, Rennie Whiting, Talia May, Chantel Johnson, Cakes Minx, Magnolia Iridium, Anonymous Weep, Dees Nuts, Ash Wisdom, Nicodemus D, The Tribute, Galaxia, Spammy, Raylan, Deathhund, Melofia, Muffin, Aruna, Meow Meow Person, Cherry Red Bunny, Cat Cove, Kaya Abyss, Bit Bit, Sleepy Tau, Hella, Nexorist, and AJ Anime Girl. Thank you for your support. It's greatly appreciated.